Okay, here we go. Giant list of red flags. I think there's about 50 of them. So we're just going to run through these. So my name is Lise Colucci. If you have any need for coaching or group coaching, any information is in the main description of every video. And if you need to reach me, I'm there as well. Let me know after you've watched this, if you have any other red flags that you'd like to add to this list, put it in the main comments so that other people can read it. Okay, here we go. Red flags. You just feel off and ill at ease around someone. I'm not even going to number them. I'm just going to read through them because there's a lot. Seduction. You feel or you're experiencing someone with charm-like behavior that you feel so attracted to, even if the person isn't attractive to you. Idealization. Someone is putting you on a pedestal. A person is love bombing. Another sign, another red flag is that this feels familiar. It feels like home. If you've had toxic upbringing, it feels too comfortable, right? Another red flag is self-centered talk. They listen to gain information only to then turn it and talk about themselves. Now, the thing is you might feel anxious around them. You might feel uneasy, sort of like looking for a way out, right? Not wanting to look them in the eye, not wanting to be around. A big one, boundaries are pushed. Boundaries are pushed. Boundaries aren't listened to. They're pushed and pushed. They're disregarded. You might feel manipulated. You might feel like you're saying yes to things you just said no to or feeling like someone's making you do something. They might be extremely arrogant. Another sign is being swept off your feet with love bombing. Another one is empathy seems lacking or empathy seems not right. Empathy seems not full and complete. Another red flag is that it's too good to be true. You can't see any flaws. You can't see anything wrong with the situation. You can't even see this person as like an actual person. They seem so amazing. Another red flag is someone who wants you to know everything about them so soon. They want you in their life and like pulled into them and their that their stuff their who they are really really fast or they want to know everything about you they are asking so many questions about you 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 without giving anything of themselves so you see either one of those because one is to gather information for grooming and the other is to gather information to manipulate you later on. There's no time in between relationships. Somebody moves on really fast, sometimes within minutes, right? Or they're still with someone and they're like, oh, but it's so bad, right? That's a big red flag. They have lots of superficial friendships or they make friends easily, like charming wise, like they charm people to being their friends, but they don't have any lasting real friendships or the friendships that they have seem very, um, what's the word? Very transactional. Another red flag is someone who shows off, someone who's boastful. High levels of seduction or feeling like that person has a coercive sexual style. Another red flag might be job issues. They lose their jobs a lot. They have lots of jobs their whole life or they don't can't keep a job or anything like that. Huge red flag, in my opinion, is a person who won't take accountability and blames others for every mistake they've ever made in their life and acts like a victim. There's a difference between actually being a survivor and acting like a victim. And it's pretty obvious when you start looking at it and you start learning to recognize what that looks like. Every single ex they've had is crazy. Now I know that that can feel like, well, that's actually true for me because I've been with nothing but narcissists, right? But it's more like the blaming and the way they describe their crazy ex is sort of like so that you feel sorry for them and believe them preemptively before even knowing who they are. This is another reason I tell people don't talk about your toxic exes with new people that you're dating too soon because it basically makes you a red flag. It really does. So it also is a sign that you're perhaps not ready to move on into a relationship because you're either still completely trauma bonded or you are perhaps to the point where you're not trusting yet and you're not able to um, engage in a healthy way with a new person yet. 
that's not to say forever. It just means maybe you have more healing to do. But when someone does this, when they are talking about their crazy ex, it's a red flag. They talk about how they're the only ones who can do things right or hold things together. That's another red flag. There are far-fetched stories of glory, totally putting all the shine and shimmer and sparkle on that narcissistic potentially person. It's a red flag. You see this person and you can't imagine the bad side, right? I kind of talk, touched on that earlier, but you just can't imagine the bad side because they're not letting you see it. That's the thing. They're not letting you see their quirks and their, and their, uh, the parts of themselves that are real, or you're not looking, you're not willing to see the bad side because everything else feels really great. So if they're love bombing the heck out of you, but they're kind of barking at a wait staff or an employee somewhere, or, you know, road raging or something like that. And you're not willing to look at that because all you can see is the love bombing. They may appear helpless and need you. Oh, we fall for this one a lot because of being empathic, we wanna help people. And it can be really subtle where it's like, oh, times have been hard. I'm, I'm really working on getting things better. And, they're, and they kind of have this helpless neediness of you. I mean, I can remember when I met a narcissistic ex that they said they were like, I was kicked out of my home and I'm, you know, I'm in between houses and blah, blah, blah. They actually had a home. They were just in the process of moving. Like basically the stuff hadn't gotten there yet, but it was already in the truck. So it did not seem unusual to me. But then the way they were talking, like, oh, I was kicked out. And then I've come to find out oh, that's because it was at your exes, you know, like they don't tell you the full information, but they play this victim of like, oh, and, and, and basically I, I'm so glad you're here because I really need a friend right now. Why do you need a friend? Cause you're moving. You know what I mean? Like, sure. We need a friend to help us move, but like emotionally, really what's going on? Oh, you're trying to make me feel like I'm needed and you're be you're acting helpless so that it appeals to my desire to help people and then boom I'm hooked right so anyway number another one is um, things feel out of balance and it makes you like them more they are it makes you chase right they will in the beginning feel your vulnerability needs they will find out what, what you're vulnerable about and they will give in those areas and start to control them or talk about them or make you feel more vulnerable. And then later, you know what happens later. They use it to manipulate you and they use it to gaslight you and they use it to devalue you. There's a lot of future faking and a lot of we talk in the beginning when you don't even know someone. I remember meeting someone and they were talking about some farm we were gonna have and what we were gonna do and I'm like, I don't even know you. That is the creepiest, weirdest, future faking, red flag, goodbye. They do things to secure a position in your life. Start fixing things, start being your savior. Start, if they know that your, your ex was toxic, start being the hero that you've always needed in ways that are directly lined up with what you said you need. They're securing a position so that you need them. When the truth is let out, I kind of touched on this earlier, when the truth is seen and they say things like, you know, I'm not good in relationship or whatever it is they say, and you just gloss over it and you pretend you didn't hear it. You find yourself doing things for them that seems over the top more than you should. They make you feel uniquely special. Sure, everyone wants to feel special and loved by their partner, of course, but they have a way of really quickly often making you feel like you are so unique that it it's like, again, it makes you need them. It makes you need them for more of that validation because most of us have come from um, things in life that have altered our self-esteem in a way that isn't positive. They set things up to make you feel insecure and that can happen straight from the beginning. Lies are explained away even in the beginning, especially in the beginning, explained away, this is early gaslighting. Before you even can recognize it's a lie, they're explaining them away. They give you pet names and they don't even know you. They use, unless they're from a region where that's just kind of like, that's just kind of how people talk. And that, and then you've got to filter through, is that, you know, a red flag or not? Because in some areas, that's how people are. But, and that's okay, because that's just the way, you know, the way it is there. But 
for those of us not in those areas, they will give you pet names when they don't even know you or really early on. You can see their potential. They're not actually living that potential. You can see their potential and you have the feeling that you can help them achieve it. They want every second of your time. There is constant texting, constant almost love bombing texting, constant like connection back, connection back, connection back, getting you addicted to the back and forth communication with them. They make you feel bad when you're with others. They don't allow you to see your friends. They take everything personally. They can't see things objectively. It has to be something personal, obviously. They're jealous of your children. They lack accountability and you can hear it in the stories of what they tell you about how they handle things in life. There is a judgmental, punitive attitude about them. You can see it usually early on when they're talking about things and their beliefs or their uh, convictions about things. And like, say they're talking about um, describing something politically or describing something socially going on in the community. And they have a judgmental punitive attitude. That's kind of the attitude that they're going to start to have toward you when they devalue you. Treat people like possessions. They treat their children like possessions. It's, it doesn't seem genuine or feel genuine when they talk about others. It feels like a roller coaster. They may be love bombing you one minute and then disappear. And then you're like, where'd you go? And they're like, oh, I'm right here. And they come back and love bomb you some more and then disappear. Or if it's later on, you've got the devaluing and the love bombing cycle interchanging intermittently and that's going on and it just, you're getting whiplash from it. Intimacy issues where there can be forced, where there can be sexual addiction or fetishes that are, it's not to say the fetish themselves it, itself is the problem. It is the way they are with it. They objectify within that situation and they cannot have real intimacy and real connection and real closeness. They can only have this doing to the person or basically intimate wise, they are watching themselves doing the act. They keep you in limbo over events, over time, over things like that where you can never plan. They control all. They isolate you from your friends and family. They need constant praise, constantly being told. They undermine your accomplishments and sometimes then brag about your accomplishments, the same one they undermine to people in public. Basically, when they're doing that, they're taking your accomplishments and making themselves the source of pride for that accomplishment to other people. So they're like, oh my gosh, did you see what they just did? They're amazing, blah, blah, blah. And then what happens is everyone goes, oh my gosh, and they look at you and then they look back at the narcissist and they go, tell me more about it. Oh my gosh. So the narcissist is sucking the attention that should be yours if you, you know, or not, whatever from your achievement. And that is a giant list of red flags. There are a lot more. So tell me what you see as a red flag in the main comments and we'll talk about it and we'll just keep talking. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.